Hare Krishna. So the trick worked. Your suggestion worked. And uh, our connection is back. Thank you. So we were discussing place. I was just I was just mentioning a place should be wherever it is like the best place is a temple, or if you have in your altar at your home, you know, or in, in front of Tulsi. You know, see the basic idea is a place where what reminds us of Krishna. Simple. Okay. Crematorium is not a place that reminds exactly of, of Krishna. It of course remind remind us of inevitability. That's that's for sure. <laughs> the inevitability of death. So that's that's that certainly is there, but not exactly Krishna. And it uh, also brings us uh, that uh, uh, what do you call that? The idea of uh, temporary renunciation. That is also good, but not a clean place. So that's that's all about a place, not not much. Okay. So, so. So with this, uh, we uh, at least the chanting aspect. Let's let's see if there are more things on the some more aspects uh, of chanting, some more aspects of uh, yeah things which which is useful for chanting. Let's go through them. More or less, we have covered everything. Yes. So this this also we understand. Not much because uh, time plus circumstance. Again, we discussed that that excuse of preaching. Okay. So it's not much needs to be. It already was discussed. Uh, we we understand that. In the name of time, place, and circumstance, we cannot, uh, where we should not be, you know, uh, twisting the principle. So this is, you see, one of the verses from Bhagavatam. This is what Krishna is speaking to Uddhava. Okay. Sandho pas Sandho pas tyadi tyadi karmani vede na jyoti tani me puja amtai kalpayet samyak sankalpa karma pavanem. Read on, please. Fixing the mind on me, sankalpa etc. One should worship me by his various. Prescribed duties such as chanting the Gayatri Mantra at the three junctures Sandhya Sandhya Pastyadi of the day. Such performances are enjoined by the Vedas and purify the worshipper of reactions to fruit of activities. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 11, Chapter 27, Text 12. Yes. So, do you see the same chapter, the chapter titled Deity Worship? And it is talking about Gayatri chanting. Okay. So that is how we worship and how we please Krishna. That is worshiping Krishna. Okay. So now this is uh, another argument. Generally, people come up with uh, chanting or chanting properly or improperly. Okay. That's a uh, Famous verse from Padma Quran, quoted in Chaitanya Bhagavat. Murkho vadanti vishnaya dhiro vadanti vishnave ubeastu samanvam punnam bhavagrahi janardana. Okay. So generally this is what people uh, misapply or misuse. Uh, misuse. Okay. There's something funny going on around me. There are chimpanzees running around actually. In, in our academy, around the academy. So there are other devotees who are trying to shoo them off. <laughs> anyway, so it's my point. <laughs> Things that keep happening. So, uh, so you see, so some people, those who are not very good with Sanskrit, he might not know the difference 
between Vishnaya and Vishnave. Okay, that might be there. But that Krishna can understand that. And he will nevertheless accept the essence. So what are your thoughts on this? I'm pretty sure most of you must be familiar with this. At least the Bhavagrahi Janardana section is quite popular, popularly quoted Bhavagrahi Janardana. Krishna accepts the Bhava, the essence. What are your thoughts on it? Yeah, go on. Go on. Uh, probably if someone is simple, subtle, we say, then Bhagavan will be Bhavagrahi Janardana. But if this if someone knows and she ha, he or she has potency to speak properly but not able to concentrate, then it would not be Bhavagrahi. But uh, with the innocence and simple Bhagavan is Bhavagrahi. Okay. Okay. Innocence is one of the criteria. Okay. Other thoughts? Gita, 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 go on. Uh, mostly people they, uh, this uh, take this as accuse of laziness and uh, we do not then uh, uh, give respect to the rules and regulations because of this and uh, first one should come to the level of bhava basically like uh, the state before pure love then we one should that's, think about this that's that's an important that's a very interesting point it says krishna accepts the bhava but where is the bhava <laughs> He has to come to the level of power to get to accept the power. Okay. Okay. Other thoughts? What do you think? Please, please join in. Other thoughts regarding that? On one sense, it's innocence. On another sign, there is like uh, they, uh, people taking advantage of the flunk uh, rules and regulations. What do you think? Go on. Go on, Prabhu. I think uh, he logged out, right? He logged out. Okay. So, yeah. So, that's this is uh, something uh, that is... Uh, So what is the basic bhav of a devotee? What do you think? What is the basic bhav of a devotee? To serve Krishna. Serve. serve Krishna. That's the bhav of the devotee. So that that I am that that I am trying to learn this. I'm learn. I'm trying to learn how to chant the mantra. That I'm learn, trying to learn how to worship Krishna. That I'm trying to learn what Lord Krishna likes and doesn't like. That itself shows my bow. But I don't, but I don't care like uh, what Krishna what what Krishna thinks. What what kind of bow that does that show? You see. Before before Krishna. Before we expect Krishna to understand us, let's see whether we are trying to understand Krishna. Is it not? It's like, okay, I want Krishna to understand me. Yeah, it's the same thing for Krishna. He also understand, wants us to understand him. So it's, it's, it's like uh, simple rules. The, and they are, they are not rules. They are the basically you can call them rules. You can also call them uh, you can also call them uh, pathways where Krishna is showing how you can come close to me. So, so that's the idea of Pavagrahi Janardana. So, so once Krishna once our sincerity in trying to learn, trying to practice, there was this incident here in, in, in our Mayapur Academy uh, years ago, years ago, at least 10 years ago. There was this devotee, 
I think he came from Malaysia. I forgot that country. And he was like, you know, uh, he came for this Pujari service, uh, this, uh, this, this course. And then his, uh, his, his written exam was also pathetic. There was this 10, 15 questions for the written exam. And there was only one, uh, one question. The question was, what is the definition of Archana? And he wrote, that was the only answer he wrote. Archana means Krishna. That's it. And the whole paper was blank. And then he sat for the Archana demonstration exams to worship Krishna. And it was Jananivas Prabhu who was sitting, uh, like he was taking his exams. Uh, he was examining him and he was taking up the exam. And after 15-20 minutes, he just stopped. That devotee, after, after so like he had no clue what to do. And after 15-20 minutes, he just stopped. And then Prabhu was sitting and he said, like, what? Like, he said, I, I can't do it anymore. I, I can't do anything. Just done. And Prabhu asked him, like, then he asked him, how many times have you practiced? And his answer was zero. He never practiced. He never sat for any practice. As a three-week course, he never practiced once. And then, you know, Prabhu said, Prabhu didn't say anything. Prabhu just said one sentence. He said, that you have not practiced is the evidence that you have no bhakti. It doesn't make cutting remarks like that. It is such a cutting remark. That you have no, that you have not practiced is the evidence that you don't have any bhakti. And how dare you like to, you, 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 you want to come and serve Krishna without practicing? What do you think you are? So that's the same thing. So this Bhava Grahi Janardana is that. Krishna is seeing how much we are extending ourselves. You cannot do that's cannot do. We understand. But like there are evidences like Prabhupada trying to teach Gayatri Mantra to um uh, Jayananda Prabhu, our famous Jayananda Prabhu. And he couldn't he couldn't pronounce beyond a certain point. And Prabhupada started laughing when he heard that. He tried a few times and then Prabhupada said, okay, okay, give it up. It's like it's beyond you. Leave it. Whatever way you are chanting, that's okay. You can't do that. It's like you're not practiced to that thing. Like that's too tongue tongue twisting for you. I said, but he he tried. That's the point. All right. So that's the idea behind Bhavagrahi Janardana. Okay. Pronunciation. Yeah. So you see, this is what Prabhupada says to the reply to that. Uh, so, very simple method. Anyone can practice it. We are distributing this Hare Krishna movement, the holy words, the holy name of God. And everybody is chanting. It's not difficult. In any foreign country, all over the world, it is not that because it is made of Sanskrit letters, pronunciation, Sanskrit words in other parts of the world, they cannot, even a child cannot. It's a simple, it's actually not very difficult. So with a little practice, we can go ahead. Okay. Okay, so for that, maybe we can run through the conclusion. Uh, this conclusion will be like more uh, uh, fulfilling. This, uh, uh, if we can come to page number 14. Okay. Come to page number 14. Oops, sorry. Here. 
just uh, just glance through this, take a couple of minutes, and let us our concluding thoughts on it. Okay, take a couple of minutes on this. All right, who needs more time? Okay, Giamaji needs more time. Okay, take a couple of more minutes, wrap it up. All right, so here we are. So, any concluding remarks? What do you think? What are your thoughts on it after reading the conclusion? What are your thoughts? For me, uh, the meditation part is the most important. Like Brahm Gayatri has some Radha Krishna, you have to meditate on them. And Guru Gayatri has Guru, Gaur Gayatri, Gurang Mahaprabhu, Gopal. Mantra has Gopal, Lord of Vindavan times, and Gayam Gayatri, Radha and Krishna. This is the most important, which I see. Okay. You, fo you found uh, you found this this part is uh, to be uh, more, very rewarding for you. You found yes. this part to be more rewarding. Uh, you have to go, Pasandari Maji. Please go on. For me, uh, the important part was um, understanding the meaning of the mantras. And I found that um, chart that had the Samban Hadhide Prayojana part very helpful. Actually, I started chanting in this way, and then I, I realized that it became more meaningful. But for me, a very important point, uh, what you said before, I think yesterday, about taking the instructions of the spiritual master as precedence of everything. Because, for example, my Guru Maharaj told me not to even move lips. He said to only do it in your head, no doing anything else. And that always takes precedence uh, because we get the greatest benefit by following uh, the guru's instructions. But thank you so much. Very helpful. That's just a conclusion for this chapter. Okay, Gita and Maji, go on. It's, you have given the gist in this conclusion and I find all the points very nice. And I think 
uh, I am not doing like I am not second initiated, but it's good if we read these points regularly on regularly basis so that uh, our standard of Gaitri does not go. Like that can be can be more like for a preparatory step for you, and these things can also be used for chanting our Hare Krishna mantra. There's no harm in that. Yes. Parmanetri Prabhu, go on. Hare Krishna Prabhu, from, from uh, what we have learned, Prabhu, uh, the respect should be there. The utmost respect to the Lordship while reciting the mantra, and uh, every word should be pronounced respectfully, and you should hear the words. So at the end of the day, what I learned to do while reciting the Gayatri Mantra, you must have a very high respect because you are addressing the Gayatri towards the Lordship. Yeah. So basically that was like the basically that was the conclusion of the conclusion, actually. So be 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 respectful by showing full attention. And uh, yeah, be attentive towards the meaning. And that will gradually generate some affection in our heart for Krishna. That's that's the that's the sum and substance of that. That was the very purpose of chanting Gayatri. Thank you. So with this, uh, this section is finished, and now we move on to the next section, uh, which is about uh, this is now this is more about. Uh, the procedure of uh, initiation, okay? You'll find that, uh, oh, oh, before 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 we start, let's take the uh, blessings from Sanatan Goswami. Please read on, somebody, uh, a volunteer who wants to take the blessings of Sanatan Goswami, please read on. A person uh, of disciplined mind who chants the Gopal Mantra day and night will definitely see the Lord in his Gopa form. Gautami yeah. Mantra. Yeah. So that's a fact. This is the blessings from the Gautami Tantra which is uh, extracted by Sanatana Goswami. So that's the blessings of uh, yeah, the Lord. You can see Krishna in his Gopa Vesh. So it's a fact. So, okay, so now let's move on to the procedural part of initiation. Okay, that's, uh, I mean, although you, one may, one may think that like, uh, what do we do with this procedural part? I'm not giving initiation. I'm only taking initiation, but uh, it is useful to know what do we have. So sometimes otherwise, you know, like we may have everything, but since, uh, I might not know what I have. So, uh, so I, I can take example, take, 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 take advantage of the thing which I have, even though I possess it. Let's see. The procedure of Gayatri or Mantra Diksha. Okay. So, as, as we said, it's like in, in, in ISKCON. We say Brahman initiation, but actually it is a Gayatri initiation uh, or Mantra Diksha, which is like more commonly in, 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 in Vedic parlance, it is, it is mentioned as Mantra Diksha. So let's see what do we have in a Mantra Diksha. Okay. Uh, do you have any, okay. Uh, I believe there are devotees who have uh, undergone uh, uh, ISKCON Disciples course here. Uh, how many of you here who have undergone ISKCON Disciples course at least? Okay. If there are people who haven't done ISKCON Disciples course, we will strongly recommend to undergo ISKCON Disciples course as a very uh, foundational course which is related to the first three limbs of bhakti. Uh, this is also a continuation of that. Okay. Um, so, you see, remember the basic foundation of initiation, what like the initiation is all about. Uh, if you remember, so the idea, basic idea of initiation, taking shelter of guru, 
and then and then I'll let after that taking formal initiation, okay, by chanting, taking all, and we saw the five uh, 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 factors of initiation the other day: nam, tap, yag, mantra. Remember? So, so with that background, we are moving ahead. Say, for example, the Hari Bhakti Vilas, it says this Ragi Chatma Jadosha, Patni Papam Sabhar Bhartari, Tatha Shishar Jitam Papam, Guru Prapnoti Nishitam. The faults of a counselor falls on the king, and the sense of a wife falls on her husband. In the same way, a spiritual master attains the sense of his disciple, that is certain. So, what do we understand by this? What is your idea? this. What do you think? Uh, how many of you are familiar with this, this concept? Okay. Okay. Would somebody like to like explain the concept a little bit? Elaborate a little bit? In the context we are discussing it here. At the time of like initiation, the spiritual master uh, like takes away, like you know, as the instrument of Krishna takes away the sins of the disciple. And when the disciple is making a commitment to chant certain number of rounds and following the rules and regulations and so on and so forth, if they are not going to be following, then the spiritual master is going to be getting the like you know like reaction. Yeah. So because of that, the disciple has to be like very, very careful that my actions are going to be like affecting my spiritual master who had compassionately like given shelter. So I should do my best to make sure that I am keeping my vows and like all those. Yeah. So, okay, let me play the devil's advocate here. Okay. Let me throw in some masala. Time for some masala? On <laughs> Okay, so here is here is my question. So if if this is what it is, that uh, yeah, it is Bhagavatam. Yeah, that has to be its husband. Has to be like, okay. I'll 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 I'll, I'll do the I'll, I'll do the editing. Okay. Um, thank you for bringing that in. Okay, so the. My 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 question is, say for example, if that is the case, if the guru is taking all the reactions to my sins, okay, isn't it a very nice deal? <laughs> let let one person suffer for everybody. Let other, let everybody else be excused. Isn't it the same classical argument with the quote unquote Christians give? Jesus died, died for our sins and he's suffering for our sins. So then, like, we don't have any sins. How does that work? Okay. So actually, there is more to this, uh, this idea, actually. Okay. So this, this we have to understand the spirit of that of that uh, of the of the verse, rather than simply the letter of the verse. It is the spirit of the verse. Just like it says that the foul for the counselor falls on the king, or the sense of a wife falls on the husband. Since when? According to the law of the karma, what does the law of the basic law of the karma says? As you, so, as you so, you shall yeah, reap. We reap. Yeah, as you so, so shall you reap, not somebody else reaps. What goes around comes around. Right? If I have done a karma, I will suffer the karma. Nobody else is going to take the karma. Is it not that was the classical argument Narad Muni asked to uh, the, the hunter? 
before he became Valmiki. You go and ask your 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 uh, your family members who's going to take the sin. Nobody's going to take the sin. That would turn back to his senses. Even if I'm if I'm killing the animals in the name of the family, nobody's going to suffer. It's only me who's going to suffer. So it is never the fact like if I am doing a sinful activity, I will suffer. Nobody else is going to suffer. But there is a, a, the, the spirit. What is the spirit of this verse? The spirit of the verse is say, for example, if I am like in India, like say, for example, if I am uh, accused of terrorism, I'm a terrorist. <laughs> so then my family they will be uh, very much harassed by the security agencies. They will be knocking on my doors day and night trying to find out where am I. They will harass my family till I'm arrested. But they won't hang my family in my stead. Okay. They won't hang my family, but my family will be harassed because of the connection I have with them. So that is the spirit of this verse. Just like if we have a bad association, we have to suffer for that. If a person is known by the company he keeps. But similarly, the guru, because he has got a bad disciple, he has to suffer that thing, not the karma. It's not that I, I murder somebody and my guru is taken to the prison. Not like that. But he has to suffer because now the police is going to come. He's going to repeatedly harass my guru. He's your disciple. Where is he? This has happened in Nesquan many times. It's actually happened in Nesquan many times. The spiritual masters have been like, you know, like called to police station or police has visited security agencies for the for the for the uh, the, the deeds of their disciples. So that's what the, the meaning is. So it is a spirit. So that's why the idea is not to like, and that is also to, you know, like keep, keep the disciples on track. They sometimes understand that the, the intent of the verse is this. It's not literally that the karma is being transferred, but the, the guru also is just like the father. The father suffers mentally when he says his children are suffering. The same thing. So, so that's the basic idea. Okay. So therefore, it does not minimize the disciple's responsibility for his or her good or bad deeds. Devotional service is always based on free will. So let's go ahead. So this is what it is. The second initiation. Prabhupada is talking about second initiation. Please read on. Read on. So therefore the process is before accepting a guru, one must hear him at least for one year. And when he is convinced that here is actually a guru who can teach me, then you accept him guru. Don't accept him whimsically. The system now should stop. That somebody is coming for three days, Prabhupada, initiate him. Why? First of all, see whether he is fit for becoming a disciple. Then recommend. Otherwise, don't recommend. Because the chief recommendation is creating havoc. One is not fit for becoming a student, disciple. And he is accepting discipleship. And after three days, he is going away. This should not be allowed. Srimad Bhagavatam 1.16.25-30, January 21, 1974, Honolulu. Okay. So there is some responsibility. So this is the procedure because we are talking about procedure of initiation. It is also dealing with the procedure of recommendation. Therefore, there is a procedure of recommendation. So 
So Prabhupada himself instituted that recommendation. That should be recommended. Okay. Apart from, although the, the guru-disciple relationship is strictly a bilateral thing, it's between the guru and the disciple, still there are recommendations from other devotees, which means the blessing of other sadhus are there. It's not just between me and the, my guru and the whole ontological parampara. Let, 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 like, what do I care? That's not the spirit. That's the neophyte spirit. So just like the neophytes thing. It's just me and Krishna and what do I care? And the, still the same neophyte spirit goes on. It's just me and my spiritual master and like what do I care? So no. It's, a, it's not going to be like that in, in back there in Golok Vrindavan. There is this, there is Prabhupada and this us with Prabhupada and this is on the this side of the road, please Prabhupada and all every and the whole Guru Parampara, Bhakti Siddhanta Sasitaku, everybody is standing on the other end. No, 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 no. It's just us and Prabhupada. It's not us going to be. This is the one big family. Okay. So that's why the that is the spirit. Okay. All right. So, however, there are exceptional cases, okay? The guru and disciple obviously qualified that it is all right to forego the examination period. That can be there. And there are cases like that. Exceptional case. Okay? One such exceptional case, uh, you might be, uh, you might all be knowing, I'm just reminding, as the case of Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasri Thakur getting initiation from this kind of thing. But there was still an examination in the sense that he refused thrice. He refused thrice. So, you know, that can be an exceptional case, but otherwise, uh, generally, it is never like that. Generally, it is very strict examination. And you see how Naratam Das Thakur got initiation from Lokanath Goswami. Okay. So, things like that. So generally, I uh, like uh, most spiritual masters in Islam, they don't uh, do that kind of examinations. Hardly anybody does that because they know that they won't have any disciples. So, anyway, but still, uh, that's the basic idea. So let's have the basic uh, uh, presentation of what, what do we have during Diksha, okay, initiation. Let's let's move on with that. It's more or less a presentation. So just bear with me. Okay. So let me see if I can lead you through. And I'll try to keep you awake as much as possible. Okay. So Mantra Diksha. Okay. So see Prabhupada is himself teaching how to count. So Diksha is described as the formal process of receiving a Vaishnava mantra, you see. That's what, that is the actual definition. It's a Vaishnava mantra. Because the Vaishnava Diksha, you get a Vaishnava mantra. So these mantras, Guru Gayatri, Gaur Gayatri, these are Vaishnava mantras. Okay? More specifically, Vaishnava mantra. Brahma Gayatri, you can say, okay, it's not just a Vaishnava mantra, it's for everybody. But these other mantras are, are seriously, they are Vaishnava mantras. Okay? And they are given according to the Pancharatrika system, which is the basic idea. The extent and profundity, okay, this is, uh, where am I getting this from? This is this is from uh, uh, the Gayatri book by His Holiness Sachinandan Swami Maharaj. This is the material which I am using from Sachinandan Swami Maharaj's uh, text. Okay. The extent and profundity of the ceremony are dependent on the disciple's sincerity to adhere to his vows and on the guru's transparency. See, it's both ways. The disciple has to be sincere and guru has to be transparent. Okay. What is the transparency of the guru? That he doesn't keep anything for himself. Sampradaya. The, the word sampradaya means 
samyak pradayate iti sampradaya. Everything is given. Sampradaya. Samyak. You give everything. All the knowledge, all the realization, all your blessings, all your goodwill are the most important thing. In, a, in a, an initiation, the will of the spiritual master, the goodwill of the spiritual master is transferred. <laughs> Everything else is like, can be tampered with. You see? Somebody can come, come up to me, uh, say for example, I am a Diksha Guru. Somebody can come up to me and point a gun to my temple and give me Diksha. I can give him Diksha. Why not? To save my life, right? But that I don't need to. I I I'm not in, He cannot have my goodwill. He can have the mantras. He can have the name. Everything else. You see. So that's why that 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 will of the spiritual master is that important. That is what makes it the the disciple disciple and the guru bona fide. The word bona fide means what? In good faith. Bona fide. Good faith, malafide, ma bad faith. Okay. Good faith. So in a good faith, that means the, the, the relationship is not based on authority. The relationship is based on good faith, trust, mutual trust. So goodwill. So that's the essence of uh, uh, diksha. Sometimes we see, even in Islam, we see that like, we will discuss that. Like all forms of dikshas are available in Islam. All forms of it. <laughs> okay, so yeah. So you see, it's that uh, sampradaya. So uh, yeah, uh, as you were discussing. Okay. In which the matter, if both the sincerity and transparency are present, the transcendental thing will happen. Okay, that magic has gonna happen. So this is the sum and substance like of Chaitanya Charitamrit regarding Diksha. Very famous verse from Chaitanya Chaitanya. Dikha kale bhakta kare atma shamarpan, shai kale krishna kare kare atma sham, shai deho kare tar chida dandamai, o prakrita dehe tar charan mukhajaya. Okay, go on, read on the translation. At the time of initiation, when a devotee fully surrenders unto the service of the Lord, Krishna accepts him to be as good as himself. When the devotee's body is thus transformed into spiritual existence, the devotee in the transcendental body renders service to the lotus feet of the Lord. Chaitanya Charita Amrita Antya Leela, 4th chapter, 192 to 93. So that's what is happening. That's what is happening. So when the, what's happening? When at Diksha, he is surrendering so who is accepting? So who is accepting? Krishna is accepting. You see? Krishna Tarikari Atasha. You see? You may say that I am of I am getting Diksha, the Guru is accepting. No, 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 no. Krishna is accepting. So Diksha means I am getting married to Krishna. Guru is the priest. I am not getting married to Guru. Getting my point. So that's why Guru is the transparent via media. It's transparent. He is not coming in way of me and Krishna. He is just enhancing that relationship, which is otherwise not possible. That's why one day Guru Shri Charnaravindam. That's why the job of the Guru is a thankless job. The relationship is happening between me and Krishna. Where does Guru fit in? Yes, sir. So that's the thankless job the Guru is doing. Without that, this, this, this Krishna is not going to accept. Therefore, the the devotee's body is from his spiritual existence. That's why he has got a spiritual name. Because he is, how do we know that body is becoming spiritual? Telak. You see? 
So all of that. Okay. That is the idea. The formal process of Diksha substantiate not only this between Guru but disciple and Krishna. Okay. Not like now I have me and my Guru and the Krishna is out of business. The, the situation is generally it's like sometimes you see these things happening. In the initially, now I don't know anybody, this only me and Krishna. Then I get a guru. I get I get a means session. Now it's me and my guru, no Krishna. It's just you know. So we have to learn to expand our heart to include guru, Krishna, devotees, everybody. All right. So let's see what's happening here. How Prabhupada is saying, this is what he's talking about, second initiation. Second initiation means he is recognized. Now he has become a fully competent Vaishnava. Getting a point? So second initiation is the point where you say he's become a fully competent Vaishnava. What is that competence? You see? So disciple means competent, not somebody incompetent. So what is the competence of the disciple? That he should be able to serve Krishna. Not that he doesn't know anything. Okay. So these are the obvious competences of, of, of the disciple. What is the obvious competence of the disciple? That he should be able to execute the 64 limbs of bhakti. That's all. The competence is not like that, whether you can like run a shop or not, or whether you can run, you know, like something, or you can manage the security guards or not. That's not competence, what he's talking about here. He's talking about the competence as a devotee. Has, has he become competent to execute devotional service? Does he know how to drink a charnamrit? No. Does he know how to, you know, like, yeah, you know, it's like we see like there is this famous, uh, just going a little off track, uh, there's, a, there's a very uh, interesting uh, incidence, Amsterdam, uh, you, can, you can find out there like in Transcendental Diary by Harisari Prabhu, we'll find there. Uh, uh, DT installation in Amsterdam temple. And you will be in peals of laughter if you read that entire incident. Prabhupada says that there is a DT installation. So Prabhupada comes there, there is a yagya. He says there is nothing there, no fruits, no flowers, nothing, no idea how the yagya is going to be happening. So and devotees are all running around here and there. He said, okay, bring some fruits. So one of the Matajis, she goes inside like the, the kitchen and he cuts all the fruits and she brings like salad, fruit salad. And Prabhupada is now really angry. Said, what is this? So he says, she says, fruits. Who said that? He said, the temple president. Where is the temple president? So what is this going on? And you know, and the whole Amsterdam, because it's the first time there's a Hindu temple uh, like being installed. So there are all press. Press is gathered with TV cameras and Prabhupada is yelling and shouting in front of the press. Yes, sir. What does he care about press? He is only care, he is only concerned that the Jagannath should not be, he is asked to be worshipped. Why this is not there? That is not there. It's like, you know, incompetently. And then Prabhupada says that temple president, you are not fit to be a temple president. <laughs> But then later on, after the yajna is done, more than like they brought an altar and then guess what? They found the Jagannath is bigger than the altar. The Jagannath is not fitting inside the altar. So then they close the curtain and then they're inside. You see the Prabhupada is giving lecture and you can hear that this, you see the, um, the hammer is going on and they are using that saw and you can hear the noise that they are cutting that altar somehow to fit in Jagannath, like that. But at the end of the whole scenario, the whole fiasco, that, that temple president was given sannyas by Prabhupada. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So even after that has happening, but so that's the idea. So it should be competent disciple. You see, it should not be incompetent. Though they don't know how to serve Krishna. That's the idea. Second initiation means you should be competent. So like he cannot even offer bhoga to Krishna. You cannot cook. Okay, fine. You cannot cook. At least can you cut some fruits for Krishna? You don't know how to do that. You know, these are the basic things. Basic things to serve Krishna. Right. Fully competent. That's why everything Prabhupada taught. Now, why did Prabhupada taught him by himself? Why did he taught devotees to wear sari himself? Why did he taught people to cook by himself? Why did he taught devotees to mop the floor himself? Because that is exactly what the guru is supposed to do. Teach everything, all the 64 limbs to the disciples. We cannot, as, as Prabhupada followers, we cannot come, we cannot find that fault in Prabhupada that Prabhupada didn't taught these things. He only spoke about these things. Every single limb of Bhakti Prabhupada taught to his disciples. So being a guru is a fairly heavy task. It's not about lecturing. Okay. So let's have a presentation, maybe. It's time for a presentation. Eligibility criteria for Bhanta Diksha. How about this? How about having a small reading session and presentation on eligibility criteria for second initiation. Okay. Let's find out for ourselves what are the eligibility criteria. So let's come here. Right. Let me let me figure this thing. What needs to be read? Okay. I think this is enough with the recommendation part. Uh, it's page number in your uh, page number two. Uh, let me share. I believe everybody has the document with him. With them, with them, right? This one found it, page number two. This is uh, this one, session number four, right? Session number four, and you see this is the page number two. So from here, we will just read uh, the whole thing till page number four and five, and also see read the Recommendation part, up till the recommendation part, just this, five, okay? Two to five. Take uh, 15 minutes, it's good. And let's, let's have a discussion on that, okay? Right.
So, who needs more time? Who needs more time? Are the bodies good to go? Krishna, are you good to go? Are you good to go? No. I know there are a few uh, typo errors. I'm trying to fight them and rectify them. It's all about this husband and spiritual master. Something has happened. Hare Krishna, are we good to go now? Yes, Hare Krishna. Yes, Prabhu. Okay, so be it. So let's begin. Uh, who would like to go first? Give us a give us a summary, a few few bullet points. What it is. What are the eligibility criteria for initiation? Go ahead. I can say something very small, Prabhu. Mm -hmm. uh, Krishna. Uh, and one uh, section, Shina Prabhupada said that he looked to see someone who was steady in their service and um, and uh, matured in their chanting and he he um, and he said those devotees were ready for the Gayatri mantra those who were steady and uh, in, in performing devotional service and chanting their, their prescribed number of japa. I could not actually, uh, to, be, to be honest, I could not hear properly because the voice was not so clear. Oh, sorry, uh, sorry, Prabhu. Can you hear me now? I can say again. No. I would, I would, I would, I would uh, invite others to join in. Help, shall I start? Help him out. Go on. Shall I start? Uh, so I will. Go give on. The, yeah, please go on. Give, I will give the overview. So in this, uh, like pages which you have told to read, uh, like uh, it is that uh, the eligibility criteria. It's the guru who see uh, if the uh, like the disciple is eligible uh, for diksha or not. First point. And he should have Brahman qualities. There are a few quotes from Chaitanya, like from Lord Chaitanya, that for the red Brahman qualities. And uh, like uh, there, there should be cleanliness. Uh, when, whenever who is uh, eligible for second session, he should be understanding the suchi, what is uh, cleanliness. And uh, like, and uh, more important, like he should be on a Satogun. For example, if he's uh, seeing the toilet not clean, so it's saying, okay, it's a lack. So it, the very thing I, I found is very good. So that means he's also in Tamagun. So, so that because uh, like he, Prabhupada is talking about the reaction. If uh, like uh, Satyagun can if react with Tamagun, it will be a problem. Like there would be some problem. So it is not like that if you are a pig, uh, Tamagun, and if you want to be a pig, then no problem. But Satyagun people will be having a problem. No, no, this is not good. So that is a very important uh, point that the reaction should be there. Uh, uh, otherwise, you will be. And and Prabhupada says that you should, uh, like whoever is eligible uh, for second session, he should come for morning arti. If he is not able to wake up, then uh, no, uh, he is not eligible uh, for second session. And okay. he talked about... And no, he talked that was, hmm? Go on, go on, please go on. He, he talked about the uh, rules. And regulations, there should there are certain rules which has to be followed. 
and uh, certain exams has to be conducted uh, for second initiation and the important point is steadiness it should be steady like whatever services he is doing it should be steady on that it is not like one day he is doing more and another day uh, he is uh, not doing anything and and that's why uh, and prabhat says the, the whole recommendation process is from temple president and, and gpc and he also discussed that uh, if uh, like prabhat can be sent email for the recommendation he will himself do the gayatri on the thread and he will transfer the thread and like uh, so this is the process and at the last like for the girl uh, if he is married to a brahman uh, person then again he it, it has it has to go to the process of uh, like second initiation it is not like that if she married to brahman she becomes brahman and uh, system has to be followed <laughs> so all the system so this is uh, yes yes so the initiation get is non transferable it's not that the boy is Brahman and you get Brahman, initiated to the Brahman and you also become a Brahman. <laughs> you, have to, you have to earn your own initiation, you see. So yeah, bear your own cross. So exactly. So good, good. These are some of the, uh, what about like, what about recommendations? Anybody like would like to, uh, uh, please, uh, I need a volunteer who can, who can throw more light on the recommendation. And did somebody notice there was a point on Bhakti Shastri as well? Yeah, Gita Indula Kamaj, go on. That uh, if there are no uh, such devotees or no people, uh, then they should not be, if they are not a Brahman, then they should not be given the uh, initiation, second initiation. That doesn't yeah. mean that if we have centers and we are not devotees, then we should not uh, uh, initiate them. If they are not to the, up to the proper standard. Yes, yes, and we also saw it like there is also a point. I mean, I didn't like uh, bought so many quotations on here to just like overburden you, but there are profuse uh, instructions of Prabhupada on Bhakti Shastri that uh, we should not have like this. That, that he used to hate that idea of this two press of Brahman thread. Prabhupada used to really hate that idea of two press of Brahman thread. But it, you should have all qualified. Like well read, they should be. They should know the shastra. They should know the puja. They should know this. So this idea of bhakti shastri was also this. Both things, the theory and the practice. The theory, which means this examinations, and the practice means the archana. They know they are really brahmanas, not just two passive thread brahmanas. So he used to hate that idea because he saw he saw that thing around himself. That's why he was very particular about this. So, and the qualifications with the qualities. Thank you. So, if if we summarize, I just wanted you to read through that so that before, I, if I summarize, it doesn't seem to be overwhelming or too impractical. I'm just trying to summarize the basic, all the all the teachings in the slide. It will be easy for you. It's just like I'm summarizing the whole thing. But after you've read this, you will find this like more uh, acceptable. This is a nutshell. Things which are favorable, things which are unfavorable. You see? So I'm reading them for you. Uh, let's see the favorable part. Is regularly chanting 16 rounds? At least for one year, shall be initiated for the second time. That means second is. Okay, here we are. Some of you are having, maybe because it's my phone, it's raining actually. Maybe that is the reason. Uh, okay, so the favorable part is chanting 16 rounds at least for one year and be, and an unfavorable part is not that everybody has to be a Brahmana. You see, Prabhupada is very particular about it. Not that everybody has to be Brahmana just because he has been initiated for one or two years. No, that is not the criteria. Prabhu, I am initiated for one year or two years. Now I, I am always automatically qualified to be a second initiated. No. You have to come to that standard. No? So that is not the concept. Then certainly, Papad is also giving 
other uh, ideas as we can see. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. So must live up to the rules and regulations of Brahminical life. That's the idea. Okay. First and foremost is cleanliness. You see, that's why we are like always talking about this cleanliness and punctuality. It is cleanliness. Brahmana means sachi, the quality of the Brahmana. And there is this this idea of Brahmana is not the you know like uh, the Brahmana Kshatriya Vaishya Shoda. This is the Brahm the, this the Brahmana here is Brahma Janati Brahmana. It's a spiritual quality, cleanliness being next to godliness. That idea. It's not that you are dirty from outside and also from inside. These are devotees who have this excuse. No, no, we are. You see, it's all inside the heart. It's all inside the heart. The heart is clean. So who cares for your clean heart? Like you are a dirty person and like forget everything else. What outside external is the manifestation of the internal. If you are unclean from outside, so it only shows how unclean you are from inside. Okay. So if one cannot even rise early for month, this is connected to cleanliness. This is connected to cleanliness. So that he should never be given Brahmanical initiation. Prabhupada was very empathic about this. He cannot even rise up for Mangalarti, should not be given second initiation. See? Acquire the Brahmanical qualities perfectly situated in the mode of goodness. So then he should aspire for this. The devotees should aspire for this mode of goodness. Okay? The purpose you know, is found to have no reaction to Rajagantha Magam, then he is not improving. How do you know that this is it? This is how you know that if he is improving, if he is going towards mode of goodness, he should not he should not tolerate that. What is the tolerance? Tolerance doesn't mean he's like yelling and shouting on others. He should come forward and clean. That is the idea. The idea is not that you start yelling and shouting on others. That is again Rajagun and Tambagun. You should come volunteer and clean. Uh, becoming fixed up in his service, that is again another thing. That is steadiness, you see. Sign of Sattva Guru. That is sign of Sattva Guru. Steady service, attitude, interest, chanting has matured with proper realization. Devotee is now ready to initiate the Gayatri Mantra. So steadiness. He's steady with his service means uh, he is regulated. Sattva Guru. If he is not becoming purified from the rotten tunnel, somehow then there is no second initiation. That should be the rule. Prabhupada is so strict. He is still in the rotten state? No. Becoming competent and purified by chanting and advanced in spiritual knowledge. Like Bhakti Shastri is one, one such criteria. Okay. He is showing this his inclination for hearing and chanting. He likes to study, read. You see? these things. But insistence on the part of the disciple to be initiated is not very good. Forcing the guru time and again please give me, please give me this, please give me this. See, there is a difference between eagerness and insistence. I am eager to have second initiation. That's Satogun. But I'm insisting to give me, give me because this other people have also been given second initiation. That person also have got second initiation. You see? So that's not good. The general policy, now this is the general policy. Prabhupada is saying general policy. General policy for Brahminical initiation, candidate is recommended first by the temple president or the GBC. Even if he has no, we have no devotees to, so Prabhupada was at times so strict. Even we have no devotees to manage the center and there may be pressing demand for Brahmanas. The can, can, uh, candidates must be qualified, so it does not become a farce. Not that now that you have got a temple, now you need brahmanas. Suddenly you wake up one fine day and you need to require brahmanas. So give a second initiation. Now that's not an excuse. That means it itself shows that it's like he's not a brahmana. What was he doing? He was sleeping all, all these days when the temple was being opened. Why were not they prepared for that? Okay. So these are the, in nutshell, the 
basic idea of trauma given second initiation. Okay. So be some of those qualifications. Okay, now this is a very important exercise. Last, we will finish with this exercise. Okay. Experience of inappropriately seeking or bestowing second initiation. Relate an incident where you, either you or all of these, any of these incidents, experience inappropriate discrimination while seeking initiation, witnessed a candidate being inappropriately discriminated against the or lastly, witness the candidate applying and being a stroke initiation and appropriate. Any of these experiences. Okay. This is quite an intense exercise now. Right? Okay. So if you have seen such, such an incident, or you have been witnessed that you have experienced yourself that thing, okay? Is the question, is the question clear? Is the question clear? Yes, probably. Yes, probably. Yes, probably. Okay. So, uh, take a moment and uh, we will share the experience without names. Okay? No names. No names. Inappropriate experience. Okay. Prabhu, should we discuss it today? Yeah, we will discuss it now. Okay. No, why not? No names. Okay. I need volunteers. Certainly, I mean, it requires volunteers. I can't force people to do that. But volunteers, please. We will have, we will have, we will learn something. Learn something. Okay. Ananda Ram Prabhu, if, if you also have seen such experience, please. Feel free. I will be more comfortable with you. Uh, okay, Gita Indulekha Mataji. No names. Yes. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Tell us the I incident. Have, I have seen that uh, some devotees are not even chanting their rounds properly and they were getting initiation. And uh, devotees of a group, though they were properly qualified to get initiation because they belong to that group. They were not given initiation in a temple. Okay. So, if I understand correctly, you saw favoritism yes. that like in some places people who were not qualified were given initiation and others who were actually qualified were not given initiation. Okay. Uh, assuming that what you saw is the, is the full and final truth, how does that made you feel when you saw this, how did that make you feel? I thought that I would never take Brahman initiation in my life. It's a saleable and purchasable thing. You found that this is like as if it's a sale and purchase going on. Yes. So you felt that this is a sale and purchase going on. It's pretty yes. strong. Pretty yes. strong an emotion. Pretty strong an emotion. Okay. So uh, what general principle? What general principle about second initiation can be drawn from your experience? In your opinion, what general principle should be there for second initiation? The principles that are given in the guideline book are self-sufficient. The devotee is, is following the regulative principles and is is doing some service in the temple. And uh, these principles that are mentioned in the handbook are, I think, self-sufficient for a devotee to... Uh, get the hey. second initiation. All right. He should be chanting. He should be doing some service. He should be sincere. So that's 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 enough. That's that that should be that is the minimum standard, and that should be adhered to. 
Thank you. Thank you, Gita and Duleka Majid. Thank you very much. Next time, say for example, you are in the position to recommend somebody for second initiation. You are in the position where you have been asked to recommend somebody for second initiation. What would you do? It's a very tough question. <laughs> but uh, I will see these things in a devotee, uh, like whether he is coming to the temple in regularly basis on festivals or he's chanting his rounds and attending the classes or not and uh, his sadhana chart. And in, in spite, he may, he may give his sadhana chart even wrong. I have to at least uh, monitor that person for that. All right. You will just ensure that he is good with his sadhana. He is good with his services. He is coming and taking part in temple programs. It's a good a devoting good standing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gita and Dulega Madhaji. Okay. Uh, Rasik Shekhar Prabhu would like to uh, take your experience. Hare Krishna Prabhuji and devotees. Um, I have uh, one experience, Prabhu. And um, I found out that uh, one devotee is a uh, okay um, like a leader. Let's say he is a leader. He is a leader, and he is not second initiated. And uh, the other leaders have second initiated. So he wants to get initiated, and uh, he went to the guru, and he apply with the letters of Bhakti Shasi and Disciple course, which are found to be forged, which are found to be forged, uh, like, you know, yeah, yeah. the Photoshop, like Photoshop, and um, they get initiated. And uh, later I found out that, uh, why is it need to be, uh, you know, uh, lie, you have to lie to get uh, you know, to get uh, initiated as a Brahman. So that is uh, my experience. So when you found this out, that as I understand that uh, this devotee who took his initiation with the documents forged. So how does that made you feel? And you found that out. How did you felt? Um, I feel the... Uh... It's not because he's a leader. Uh, it can be a you know misguidance for the other devotees in the yatra. So it can be done like this. Everybody want to be like this, and they will not be respecting him, or they will not be you know looking up to him for the you know. For okay, the, didn't find it very respectful. But yeah, disrespectful. Yeah. They found it very disrespectful. Okay. Yes. Okay. So. Uh, Given that, what general principle about second initiation would you uh, feel is like that can be formulated based on this experience, general principle on this experience? At least uh, the candidate uh, should be truthful and uh, no lying for Brahman initiation. And the authorities should check all the documents to be, you know, uh, realistic or, you know, with the proper channels like whoever giving, uh, you know, awarding Bhakti Shastri colleges should be, you know, directly communicated with the, you know, gurus and sannyasis so that these things cannot be, you know, uh, again and again happening. So basically, uh, truthfulness and uh, verifiable truthfulness. So yes. it's like truthful and it should be very verifiable truthfulness. Okay. So what happens next time you are in that position, say, for example, you are recommending somebody for second initiation. What would you do according to this principle? I, I will verify. It. I will verify with the, you know, responding, uh, whatever Bhakti Shastri awarding, you know, schools. Okay. So that uh, these things cannot be uh, get into very easily. So this will, you know, it will be like this <laughs> to Prabhupada also and is gone also. Thank you very much. Thank you. So yeah, this is part of the training, and so that we we only have only one place to go improve. Thank you. Okay, Aradita Sham Shamkanta Mataji, please go on. 
Hare Krishna Prabhu. Thank you for the wonderful course. And last, uh, you gave us the chance to give us the chance to share our experience. That is the main thing. Uh, because currently, uh, we are struggling for second initiation. Uh, we have seen a lot in ISKCON that uh, for second initiation, though you are qualified, I'm not uh, pride about myself, but though you are qualified, but you have to take recommendation later from temple. And uh, Prabhupada clearly said that after uh, one year of first initiation, you can apply for the second initiation. But still, some temples are uh, uh, recommending that if the temple need, particularly for deity worship, then you will get only the second initiation. That is become the more, most hectic process for us. So, uh, like Indulekha Mataji has uh, said that uh, uh, she won't, uh, don't want that initiation. But in my case, it is not. I I think that initiation is my right, and. Uh, when I heard clearly, first of all, for six, six months, I was contemplating that the initiation is not completed. After getting first initiation, the initiation is not completed. We should uh, try for second initiation. And the concept became clear when I heard uh, His Holiness Bhanuswami Maharaj. Just a few weeks back, he in Srimad Bhagavatam lecture, he uh, clearly uh, told this idea. So I was then determined then uh, whatever uh, go, whatever goes, but I should try for second initiation and we should get it. Like uh, it becomes uh, stubborn. Uh, I become stubborn on it. So, but uh, I cannot uh, find out the way uh, how how to approach and uh, and the initiation form form is also in my table. And uh, some my Prabhu in, uh, go, in goes to seva daily seva for Jagannath Mandir uh, Saturday and Sunday, and there some uh, some Brahmachari they recommend that Prabhuji you are looking like a sadhu or you are already qualified Prabhuji go for second initiation get for second initiation, and uh, when we ask for second initiation uh, they are just uh, roaming around us uh, no this this day that day and uh, like this but uh, in that form i found that uh, we should write two reasons why should i get uh, second uh, second initiated so uh, they they said that if i write the reason that real initiation is second initiation then i will be completely rejected from the office and they will not uh, do <laughs> they will not do that initiation so i cannot i still now i am in uh, perplex mood that what should I do? And it becomes so much pathetic that for second initiation, which Prabhupada to, uh, told everybody that be qualified, be qualified first and get initiated. Uh, but uh, it's like a begging. I am begging from someone for my initiation. <laughs> and uh, uh, my Prabhuji is a wing commander in Indian Air Force. And uh, he is uh, totally freaked. Uh, he is totally in that process. There is so much controversial thing in his court. Okay, if I gathered it correctly, uh, I'm summarizing, encapsulating that you find the whole process to be very bureaucratic. So it's like very bureaucratic that uh, yeah, you have to go around in circles trying to find which is which is a very natural and very organic, should be a very natural and organic process of initiation. You want to take initiation from your spiritual master and uh, just continue continue your service. And But somehow, but like as, uh, yeah, so it's a very realistic situation in many temples. Uh, and, uh, just you, and you are no exception in that, being just another victim of uh, the same kind of bureaucracy is there. So how does the whole thing make you feel when you like going through the whole motions? How did that make you feel? It's feel, I'm feeling spellbound after getting the whole idea of initiation and the whole thing, the meaning of everything. The, what should I say? <laughs> I'm missing Srila Prabhupada only. Yeah, you are very sad and missing Prabhupada. 
very sad and you're missing problem. Okay. So what general principle you you would you would like recommend for uh, second initiation? What like general principle should be for gen generally you can say about second initiation? Prabhuji, one thing is that here uh, the we know that second initiation is the really real initiation. It, it will help to progress further. But another side, Prabhupada clearly declares that uh, just for second initiation, you get uh, initiated first and then after one or two years come and get second initiated. Prabhupada only specifically says be qualified, be qualified, be qualified. Then where is the qualification? Because before introducing Bhakti Shastri, there are a whole lot of devotees who didn't have the philosophical analysis also. I have met such a senior devotees, they don't even, they didn't even uh, chant their Gayatri Mantra. They didn't even touch Prabhupada's, not a single book. And they didn't even do any kind of seva. So what is the purpose of that? That's so the point. So given, given that scenario, what would what should be the general principle? What do you recommend? Give yes. us one statement. First, first in the, from the first initiation, it should be channelized and it should be properly education. Only there should be proper, proper education. Yes. There should be proper education and training for yes. second initiation. Thank you. Thank you very much. So given the chance, what yes. would you do to educate uh, devotees? Uh, it is very it is very difficult because all the temples are doing on their own it should yeah, become a but, but in your in your capacity what would you what would you do what would you like how would you implement this this uh, right now i'm not thinking in on that elaborate process but uh, in in in, uh, in my capacity i should train them on prabhupada's books just you have gathered all the uh, dialogues and conversations of Very good. Father. Very Just... good. That's it. That's it. That's that's a small beginning that 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 has a very long uh, ramification. So yes. it's, it's, it's yeah. It, it may be, however simple it may be. It has, it's like, okay, we have completely ran out of time. I understand we have got many devotees wanting to share their experience now. But today we have completely ran out of our time. Let's conclude the discussions, okay, by citing the relevant GBC resolutions. Okay, read on. I need a volunteer to read this and conclude today's discussion. Go on. The Guru Services Committee is directed to arrange for an in-depth study of the varying policies for second initiation in ISKCON and present their recommendations to the GBC at the 2021 annual general meeting. According to the resolution, different initiating gurus in ISKCON have established different policies regarding when second initiation may be offered to an ISKCON member. Some offer second initiation quite readily to all, regardless of the service they are performing in the society, and others offer second initiation readily only to those who are expected to be engaged in worship of ISKCON temple deities, and very few others. This lack of Uniformity in second initiation policies of ISKCON's initiating gurus may be the source of unnecessary conflict and confusion. The minutes read. Okay. GBC. So the GBC had recognized the problem and GBC is coming out like even this year as we are talking, uh, 2024, you can read some GBC resolutions, some relevant GBC resolutions. And let me see if I can post after the class, I will post some GBC resolutions and they are all good news. Okay, so finally, there is some light and the, at the end of the tunnel, you can see a few good GBC resolutions coming this year. You see, this is 2020. It took four years because there was COVID in between. So during COVID time, they didn't do much. But after COVID, they again took up this and they have some very positive GBC resolutions. So, so we do expect we have some good news. So we do expect the scenario to change. It will change slowly. Don't expect miracles overnight, but slowly but surely, the scenario is gonna change. So on that note,
ಅಪರಾಧ So for me it is uh, we we have to completely surrender on the krishna uh, like uh, if you see something else for me but i do i keep my distance from those devotees and and have my sadhana if it is there it will be done it's a krishna grace otherwise uh, i have to krishna mantra is enough uh, and like uh, so we don't have to see the fault finding otherwise it will uh, like uh, our own sadhana will be disturbed and like envy nature will be coming oh so we have lot of uh, problems in, in our side in our heart so avguna so we should uh, only see to improve our aguna not and we have to find every guna in others so okay. we should uh, we should see everything good in others and we should find fault in uh, ourselves this is like what i have learned in many years i don't know but uh, this is my view thank you for your thank you for your contribution that's also that's also a very valuable contribution uh, we should never lose sight that ultimately that it is all coming from krishna and krishna's will shall reign shall reign supreme so because it's an education uh, going on so that's why we are delving into all possible angles uh, so that's also part of our education but thank you for your input uh with that we close today's uh, session and tomorrow we will continue with the procedure some remaining part is there we will see what what all goes on in that initiation and then we will also uh, tomorrow being the last day we will also delve into the benefits of that initiation okay so thank you thanks to all the students all glories to shila prabhupad all glories to the assembled devotees hari krishna Thank you.